of the Audi Guide podcast. Got a lot to talk about today. Uh, Brandon, how are we doing today? Doing wonderful. That's it? Yeah. Okay. F- f- cool. feel it. It's still freaking cold. <laughs> there's still lots of snow. It doesn't seem like there's any end in sight. And your brain is frozen. Yeah. And I mean, last week's episode, we talked about snow and complaining about it. And I'm not complaining about it. It's just, it gets you know, it wears on you. It, it wears sure. on you a little bit. So, yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, so we uh, wanted to introduce one of our sponsors again. Uh, we mentioned them last week. Why don't you go ahead, Brennan, and uh, take this away? Yeah, so Brush Tones. Um, if you remember last week's episode, we had them as a sponsor. We're still going to continue with that promotion of five wildlife prints. All you got to do is go on to – you look in the show notes, you'll see, see a bunch of our social media handles. We'd like you to like the Facebook page, but you can do Instagram or Twitter as well. Um, that elk picture I was talking about last week just got uploaded to their that was the, site. That was the pencil sketch. So yeah, yeah pencil and there's still sketch. another one coming. Go um, check it out. Uh, put that yeah. one. You put that one in, in the link. Um, if it gets finished this week, I think. We'll, Perfect. Yeah. So you can send an email, or you can send an email to audiguide.promo at gmail.com, Your name and email, and uh, we will announce more winners next week. Yeah, or whenever we have at least a few people that mm-hmm. will join in. Yeah, this is yeah, this exactly. is brand new, so your chances of winning are substantial. <laughs> Let's put it yeah, put it that way. So anyway, but but uh, also just to plug the other social media um, links that we have, uh, the goal of this is pretty much just to create a community of like-minded people. So uh, go like us on uh, Facebook, check us out on Instagram, Twitter. All those different uh, social media outlets, outlets, and uh, look for new exciting things to come. I guess so. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we will be announcing uh, winners in the next weeks to come mm-hmm. uh, of that drawing. It's something you want to enter. It's it's we want to build up. Cool. A, we want to build up a customer, our community. Yeah, can't like you can't have one guy win all five paintings. Yeah, it's exactly. going to be very fair, right? Yeah. And by the way, since we launched that, it wasn't that the people listening to our podcast uh, it may have been. It may have been. But what happens is on Brushstones, just in the last week since we we've been doing some marketing with them, their their sales on their products have just been skyrocketing. So it's kind of cool. Um, that's one thing that we're going to specialize. We're going to talk about as we as we build this out. Um, Brandon has been working uh, specifically with the owner of Brushstones and helping him with some marketing tips and uh, kind of helping him get things set up. And it has taken off just in the last week. He said, "Yeah, it's really uh, cool." Since we started uh, working with him and, and since he sponsored the podcast. It's gone nuts. Yeah, it's really it's, it's nice, and you know what? It's if you're interested in in I don't say changing your life, but if you have a brand that you want to launch, or maybe it's just a, a t-shirt or a hat, or you have a product that you're interested in maybe creating, seriously, shoot us an email, audiguide.marketing at gmail.com. We'll help you out. Awesome. I want to introduce a guest that we have on with us today? He's going to be helping us out with one of the uh, segments that we have. Uh, going uh, to be talking about how to stay sharp during the winter drag months uh, for bow hunters. Uh, it's a pretty sad time because you can't go outside and shoot very well, uh, at least not here with 9,000 feet of snow. So anyway, so we have Kevin Weiser. I've known Kevin. Uh, good day to you, Kevin. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, uh, Kevin and I are actually cousins, and uh, we've been duck hunting since before I can even remember. Yeah, um, uh, I started bow hunting with him and his dad probably ten years ago. Um, Kevin is a uh, is an employee. Well, his his full time job is a is an electrician. Is that right? Yep. Um, working to become a master electrician, but uh, his passion or his his fun job is he is uh, you. What is your technical term? Um, kind of a bow tech bow. training, I guess. See, he works at a bow shop, my favorite bow shop, um, and I'm going to plug them for Go ahead. free. Totally, go ahead. Um, it's Wild Arrow Archery. Um, they are awesome. If you're looking to get a bow in Utah, or if you're even in Idaho, go down and see Kevin. He is a tech there, and he will get you set up with the best bows. Um, we'll put we'll, the link. We'll put their their shops link on our description notes for sure. So, Kevin, don't be afraid. Jump in, chime in, crack wise, whatever you want to do. 
uh, because this is, uh, like I said, a community. It's not just about us. So. All right. Sounds good. Anyway, so uh, moving on. What do we got, Brandon? We got uh, like we. This is typically where, just so we're all aware, where we're we'd be doing some question and answer, uh, taking some calls, voicemails. We're, we're going to get that up for now. Either record the your voice question and send it, or send it in an email to Audi Guide dot talk at gmail dot com yeah it's, it's, it's really simple to make a voice note and transfer it to an mp3 or share it we have tools to to convert it to uh, any file that you do it so we'll play those um send us your questions but you know we like to start off by talking did you do anything did you do any fishing or hunting this week i did not do any uh any fishing or hunting but i did register for the upcoming elk calling competition so it, the International Sportsman's Expo comes up in uh, March. I believe is the seventeenth, the weekend of that, the weekend of the seventeenth uh, of March. And uh, they, last year I got gypped. I didn't get, a, I didn't have. I practiced for like a year, and I ended up not having the competition. Of oh yeah, I'd be... but uh, so this year they are having the competition. Uh, it is the uh, World Championship Elk Calling Competition. It's pretty much the the run up. So once they get all the different. Uh, areas so they have some in Idaho and some here in Utah wherever they have those then you'll I think you meet in Vegas at the uh, at the um, the expo or whatever oh, they nice. have yeah. Rocky Mountain finish Foundation Vegas is always on. a good time and you'll go up against some of the pros uh, Corey Jacobson and uh, some of those other guys That's cool coming for you cool Kevin <laughs> you fishing and hunting anything fishing or hunting related past week oh man I wish there's this snow it's hard to do anything. <laughs> Yeah, how many how many bows you sling though? That's and tell us That's about related. your tell us yeah. about your new bow. My new Brandon bow. just got a he or he just got a new uh, Kevin just got a new bow and it is sexy. Tell us about it. It is a uh, carbon defiant thirty four by uh, from Hoyt. Um, Not just that, but it's got a custom camo job. Yeah, right. Yeah. It started out being black, and I did, I was not a huge fan of the black, and I I got it. <laughs> I got it dipped here in Utah, and now it's a uh, Kuyu Verde pattern. Kuyu Verde. Remember we talking last sounds week good. about all the different uh, It sounds like patterns. something I'd eat. It sounds like a burrito. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Welcome to Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. What can I take you order? Yeah, Taco Bell, my uh, bow. I don't want you order. What's yeah. your order? <laughs> hey, this is Taco Bell. What's yeah. your order? Uh, Verde? So you've been testing Kuyu it out? Kuyu Verde? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. You see, he's going. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, You're making so me hungry, anyway. man. <laughs> <laughs> I need to work on my my uh, my Taco Bell announcer. Yeah, no Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, anyway, so it's a, it's a Hoyt carbon fiber defiant. I'm not. Uh, I have a defiant as well. Honestly, it's probably one of the best bows I've ever shot. Definitely. It is not the carbon version. Mine isn't. It's aluminum, but it is, it is uh, pretty. It's not quite as sexy, I'll say, but it is uh, It is pretty close. It's close second. But See, I um, say the same thing about fly rods. I, I get a fly rod. I'm like, oh, man, this thing is just gorgeous. And my wife's always like, why do you talk about them like that? <laughs> and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I've never really thought of it, but it's just the first thing that pops in your head. Well, when you get something like for a bow, when you get something that you you just – I tell everybody, when you're going to go buy a bow, it's not so much the brand. I mean, typically you're going to have – the the better brands or the more well, well all brands, brands all brands I mean they they react and act the same well, way Ver, well, versus pretty other brands. close yeah. yeah but but you're gonna they're gonna have better components typically but that doesn't always mean it's gonna be the bow for you I tell people all the time go shoot a bow oh, tech yeah. go shoot a diamond yeah. go shoot a Matthews go shoot a Mission go shoot the Hoyts go shoot you know Prime go shoot yeah. all the bows pay really close attention to how it feels when you shoot it. And that and the uh, these defiance, they are. We can talk like about it. We can talk about it. We, we can talk about it when we get into get the side. I'm sorry. Oh, I know. Get you're told. Man, pump the brakes. We'll get there. <laughs> pump right. The brakes. It's like you get a you get a phone number from a girl in high school and you call her ten minutes later. <laughs> pump <laughs> the brakes. Slow pump down. the brakes. Play the game. Um, All right, I'm down with that. Cool. So um, anyway, yeah. You know, I, I didn't do any fishing this week, um, this past week, but I did tie flies. Oh, nice. Yeah, I grew up tying flies. My dad had a a, a tie fly fly tying. Wow, tie flying. Tie flying. That's what my kid says. My uh, dad. Let's tie flies. I have a tie, tie frying key <laughs> for you. I tie fry. Do you tie fry? 
<laughs> anyway, so I whatever you however you say it, a fly tying kit. Uh-huh. I used to love to do that. You get all the feathers and you wrap them yeah. around. You, yeah, it's, it's always oh, fun. It's, you make up your it's own. Great. Oh yeah. So when I was a kid, one of some of the best flies that I had, I would just make them up. I called him the Ugly Matt, or you know, I had a friend that was named Clint, Ugly Clint, just ugly, named him after people, and they caught yeah. awesome. Anyway, yeah, I'm on. So I tie, I tie. No, I know you're totally cool. Yeah, I tied a bunch of different patterns. I um, I have this, <clears throat> I have this pattern. It's deadly. I mean, it's a deadly variation of one of the more popular. Um, flies a lot of people around the west, the Rocky Mountains, just basically anywhere. Did you patent it? No, I didn't patent it, but I should because <laughs> I have different variations of it. Um, I fish with it. I knock them dead on the Henry's Fork, the South Fork, the Beaver Head, the Green, the Provo, the Weber. Anywhere I fish, I'm serious. I catch fish. I catch big fish. What um, is it? I'm not gonna tell you. Here's what you're gonna do. <laughs> you're gonna, no, you're gonna send us an email. You. You're gonna send me an email. I am? Anybody. If you want to know what this you're pattern is. You're going to go through the loops? Oh, heavens yes. Through the hoops. Heavens yes. Dang, man. If you, here's what I'll make it's you rough. a deal, Matt. If you go through the loops, I'll, our hoops, I'll give you some. Nice. All right? But for our audience, go like our Facebook page or send us an email. And uh, I'm going to share that pattern. You should give those away. Just, I could. Yeah, just randomly I tied make some probably somebody. like 100 of them. You so, should. Yeah, and fishing with my dad, cool. he, we go through like 100 flies a trip. So That's Really? At least. What? Oh, yeah. He, he just... That's expensive. Yeah. I mean, he'll, really. he'll snag a tree or the bottom of the, uh, the river on a big old rock, and he'll snap it off. And then you know what else he'll do? He'll turn to me and say, your knot wasn't strong enough. <laughs> Every time. And he's you're serious. Tying the he's serious. Yeah. I'm like, Dad, they're not meant to pull out boulders. <laughs> <laughs> or pull off, I mean, every time, and he gets, literally, he gets pissed. Why are you tying he gets, your dad's nuts? He's getting old. He's diabetic. Oh. His fingers shake. It gets cold. Okay. You know? But you know what? When I was a kid, he tied my knots. Paid so now it's like, it. yeah, exactly. You All know? Right. And so if he changed my diapers when I was a kid, I'll probably have to change his diapers <laughs> oh. when he gets older. Bad subject. But anyway, Saturday yeah. Saturday for, for Cool. And Fishing hunting the last yeah. week. So Good anyway, times. yeah, I, I did want to say, though, um, if it's okay with you, what I'm going to do... Um, my brother is also entering the competition, Nick, who is up in Boise, and he's going to take and he's going to record that part of the competition. Well, maybe we it. can make it a couple podcasts, and maybe even the run yeah. up to that uh, thing, we'll we'll have some elk calling strategies, and we can blow on Dude, it a totally. little bit. Dude, totally, totally, for sure. Maybe bring Kevin's dad in here, who also is pretty darn good at uh, calling. He's called more than his fair share of hunters in to him. It's like one of the aside from hunting elk, it's like one of the funnest thing to do. Is to be out in the woods and call Come some in. hunter because you'll be sitting up in the tree or behind a tree or something. You're just listening and you can hear somebody coming and you see this hunter. He just creeping along, looking every time you toot on it. He gets all, he gets his bow all hooked up and he's just. <laughs> oh, he's called in hunters. Yeah, hunters like they think he's an elk. It's hilarious. That is awesome. It is the best. Yeah, but it sucks being on the opposite side. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. And then you get called. Oh, in. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's when beautiful. you're far away from him and you hear him bugle, because sometimes he'll be the caller uh-huh. and we're up ahead. And it really sounds, it's super realistic. So we, we can awesome. tell him and use some strategies. So. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. So, hunting and fishing in the news. I know so, yeah, you, so you're, you're kind of psyched this, up. Not psyched up. You're kind of uh, riled up. Yeah. Just just something that I think is, is a, a super important um Topic that is especially important right now, dealing with uh, there's a, a bill HR 621. Um, it is uh, I'm going to let um, we have a little clip from Randy Newberg. Randy Newberg is is one of the top advocates out there for this this land grab. Essentially, in a nutshell, it, the the federal government or the states or a group of individuals are trying to get the states or this bill is trying to get the the control of the public lands back to the states now as a conservative and as a, you know probably a republican or whatever that probably sounds like a good idea yeah take away the power from the federal government right um but it's there's a lot more to it so um i'm going to play this thing a uh, little clip by randy newberg it's just about three minutes long I want you to listen to this, and we can uh, we can roll back and, and talk to it uh, when it's done. So hang on one second. I'll, I'll put that on there. I'm Randy Newberg, a hunter, outdoorsman, writer, and TV host. Like millions of Americans, I'm also an advocate for our public lands, the accessible forests, mountains, prairies, and deserts that all of us own and all of us use. There's a lot of talk these days about the future of America's public lands, the resources they hold, and how we manage them. A group of political activists is demanding that we hand public lands over to the states, what they call state transfer. 
where state land boards and state legislatures would control the future of these lands. Others are demanding that we simply sell these lands. These two ideas might as well be the same, and here's why. The American people, including you, currently own 640 million acres of public lands. Most of these lands are wide open for you and me to hunt, fish, and explore. Public lands are required by law to be managed for many uses, including wildlife, recreation, and resource extraction. Thanks to public lands, America's outdoor recreation industry generates $646 billion each year with more than 6 million recreation-based jobs. But most state lands operate differently. State trust lands, as they are called, are managed solely for maximum profit. Public hunting can be prohibited when it interferes with the ability of states to maximize their revenue. Camping, campfires, shooting, or off-roading are restricted on state lands across the West. The simple cost of public lands management would break most state budgets. Wyoming benefits from more than 30 million acres of public land, but is home to only a few hundred thousand taxpayers. So, who's on the hook when the next huge wildfire burns through hundreds of millions of dollars in firefighting costs? If Idaho were to take over 16 million acres of public land, it could run a deficit of $111 million every year. It doesn't matter how many promises are made, the financial realities would force states to sell off our public lands. If you doubt that, Google these words, Elliott State Forest and you will witness the future should the states take over our national lands. In fact, states have been selling off their lands to generate revenue and pay the bills for more than 100 years. There goes access to hunting, access to fishing, there goes camping. In reality, there goes our way of life. America's public lands were built on a generational compact, a compact where we have a responsibility to pass on our public lands and hunting and fishing heritage, as Theodore Roosevelt said, not merely to the people now alive, but to the unborn people, to those still within the womb of time. Yet bad bills are being promoted right now that would destroy this legacy. Join us in telling your lawmakers America's public lands are not for sale. Sign the petition at sportsmansaccess.org and say no to any plan that jeopardizes America's public lands in your outdoor heritage. So there you go. Um, now, this is, a, this is an issue that I think a lot of people need to be aware of because uh, I th you know, there's gonna be those people out there that say, oh, you're just a hunter and you're just trying to protect your right to yeah, hunt. Yes, fishers too. And you're it's... just fishers and you're, you and your dumb four-wheelers and fishers and all that crap. What is, how does it affect me? Well, how it affects you is that literally what's gonna happen or what could happen by this is, um, and is the states are gonna end up piecemealing off the little ch or big chunks of this land, little bits at a time to these companies, and it's gonna go private. And it's, it's not gonna just restrict hunters' access here in the state, but anybody that wants to go visit these places, Zions National Park, all the wildlife or the, the forests, and all the different land. things, BLM lands, places to go camp, places to, to hike, all those different things are gonna be cut off because it's gonna be owned by private organizations. Yeah. The, the sad thing is, is that a lot of this is being pushed by organizations that are funded by very large corporations, big companies. Yeah. I'm not typically against companies, but I am against the crony capitalism where the, the big businesses, they can pay off yeah. politicians and they can get their, their squirrely little bills into places where they shouldn't be. That's not capitalism. That's that's cheating, and that's that's dishonest, and yeah. it's unfair. So, so my question is, if with HR six twenty one, and according to this video, and then there's also a, a link to a page. It's on the Meat Eater website. Yeah, Meat Eater. A lot of you should be. Long. Yeah, a lot of you should be familiar with Meat Eater. If you're not familiarize yourself. Yeah, look him up. Stephen Rennell is awesome. We'll have the link in the show notes. Um, but my question is, and, and he's opposed. He's opposing it, and that's kind of the view I think that we're taking too. Yeah. My question is, if bills like this, you oppose HR HR six twenty one. What happens after that? What if you win the fight? Is it going to just be another year or so until they piecemeal together lobbyists and they might. money and campaigns? So it just seems like it's a losing battle. It just I wonder if at the core, well, what else can you do? It's, it's hard. It's such a... Yeah. Well, 
you know, if you if you give up, then uh, what are you left with? Yeah, that's, You're left and that's the wrong. So I know that's the wrong attitude, but I'm always I'm always thinking that way. You're like, what next? What's yeah, the... well, it's just a, a never-ending battle. You know what I mean? It's it's just like the the fight for your your individual liberties are constantly under you, you know your right to think the way you want, your right to do what you want, right yeah. to be who you want to be. It's constantly under attack by and, and on every angle. And so um, this is no different. It's going to be a constant fight. But it's something that if you don't fight for, you're going to lose yeah. it. And it's not it's not just here in Utah or uh, Wyoming or Idaho or it's Montana. Everywhere. It's all everybody who comes to visit yeah. here. The thousands and thousands of millions of people that visit. All those different states for recreational yeah. purposes every single year. Yeah. So and, and, I, I, and I think and, and it, this kind of touches on another point. I think it's important when you are when you you are out fishing on public land, if you're out hunting on public land, if you're doing any type of recreational activity on public land. I think first and foremost, we talked about it last show. Leave it how ha- leave it better than what you found it. Well, right. Sure, yeah. Because I mean, sometimes you get a bad rap. You could have fifty guys out hunting and not one of them would be not damage property damage anything you have one idiot that leaves a beer can or something like that it ruins his it taints that image of, of what we what we love to do yeah um first light the uh, clothing company has their own little fund that they're doing and and uh, in relation to fight to this. It. yeah they're, they're taking donations to help fight this and two percent of every sale that they make actually goes to uh fund that fight um, and th- I think they say it really in in, in a sentence or two uh, what it is. It's it's not an issue of red or blue. Yeah, this is a threat to every human who hunts and roams on public land. Yeah. Not just hunting. Uh, it's everybody who camps. Yeah, everybody who <clears throat> wants to go on a on a weekend camping trip. Everybody who wants to go. Fishing. Everybody who wants to go hiking and yeah. enjoy beautiful things, you're going to go out and you're going to start seeing posted no trespassing, yeah. private property stuff that's been public since uh, you know forever and accessed forever is going to be gone. And the the most despicable thing, like I said, is that that, that they're using, they're couching it as um, a very libertarian or a very conservative issue to give back Federal, the rights yeah. of the states. Federalism, yeah. right? Yeah, and usually when Federalism. yeah, and usually when it's the red, there's no red, blue, clear cut line, and uh, usually there's money involved. Well, there's there's, there's, there's lots back of money. door exactly. It's for a, sure some crooked crooked thing. And you know this is another important thing. This is why you need to get engaged. You need to not necessarily subscribe to this podcast or any podcast, but you need but to be hey, involved. Yeah, exactly. Why not? <laughs> you need to be involved in the community. There is an, just a – you know, we're out there. There's, there's like-minded hunters. There's like-minded fly fishermen, fishermen all around. You need to be involved with the issues and, and stay informed because you never know. There's times when I've come across like, exactly what you said. There's, there's pieces of land that I've fished for, for forever as, and as, as a kid, and I want to share that same experience with my kid. And now it's you know no trespassing or yeah. it's uh, interesting thing. We'll have we'll have some we'll have links on there. The meat eater website it has some action items in there. Um, I like there's the- some on the first light as well. First light has um, all the the phone numbers for all of the representatives. representatives. The, some of these that are that are very conservative for Utah. Uh, Mike or Rob Bishop, who's typically very conservative. Yeah, uh, I know him personally. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, he was a high school teacher of mine mm-hmm. when I was in high school. Now, and then he was a, a lobbyist and he's gone into Congress. But uh, it's typically extremely conservative. But I, 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 There's something I like on. to believe something that on. he yeah. doesn't really understand the issues or yeah. something because I don't think that he's one that's going to be uh, paid off. But who knows? You know what I mean? Yeah. You never put it past anybody. Yeah. Then there's Jason Chaffetz um, uh, who's doing it. There's Representative Mike Simpson. Uh, and these are all Utah. Labrador. These are all, these these are are all like, Utah, right? Some of you think are Idaho. Okay. So folks, the, the first light, they're based out of Idaho. Yeah. So for, for folks in Idaho, there's Mike Simpson, Raw Labrador, James uh, – is it Rich – Rish, mm-hmm. Mike Crapo, they're gonna. We'll put the links on there, and you can check yep. them out. But get get on the phone and, and let them know you're heard. Yeah, uh, and that video cl- or that that audio clip, he said, "Google Elliot State Forest." Um, yeah, give it a check out. You're gonna you're gonna see it. You're gonna be like, "Oh my gosh!" And this is one of the things that seriously, it, I guess, just a, a general proposition for everybody. It, it pisses me off so bad when. Uh, People have an agenda, and it's okay to have an agenda, but when your agenda is, it has to be essentially a, sh- a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? So there's the, one of the companies, or at least the organizations that's suing you, uh, the federal government is from Utah, 
uh, and that's pushing this. I cannot remember the name. I'll look it up. I'll see if I can find it. Um, uh, I know that uh, we'll post on our Facebook. Randy page Newberg too. does a lot of talking about it. If you go to listen to his podcast, there's several different podcasts that he's done where they explain this in detail and the ramifications. And, and hopefully, we can get some of those uh, individuals on to kind of explain it. But it, it, essentially, this company is the way that they structure their website, the way that their their branding and everything they've done makes it look like it's conservative Americans, Republicans, uh, those people, yeah, they're trying to get the rights of the states back, so join us. And and this is the thing that irritates me so bad is this this huge divide in our country with red and blue and Democrat and Republican. All that is done is removed people's ability to think for themselves. They don't think. They don't stop to use their brain yeah. And, and well, it's because it, you, you buy logically you, think you buy something. into you buy into a narrative. It's talking and then you points. Just, yeah, you talking points. You buy into the narrative, whether it's conservative or liberal. Or I don't care if you're yeah, a conservative I mean, or liberal. Stop and think yeah. for a second. You know yeah. what I mean? The 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 I'm a firm believer yeah. in keeping is, it simple. Yeah, right. Keeping it simple. And some of the the sayings you've heard since you were a little kid: the golden rule. Do you treat others the way you want to be treated, right? Mm -hmm. That this is pertinent here. You don't want somebody coming in and grabbing something from yours and, and then kicking you off of it so you can't use it. Um, the you know honest, honest with your your fellow man. You know being being honest. All those different things. It's super simple and just follow those as a guideline and you'll be all right. But when you when, as soon as you start trying to couch a narrative to cover whatever you think you're doing, that's yeah. when it starts to to uh, be extremely. I don't know. Just it just pisses me off because it's yeah. not right. Yeah. So, anyway, that's kind of my rant. But about that, it's it's yeah. just we just were gonna say this for rants and rays, but you know we thought it was important. <laughs> Let's just start off on the news. <laughs> you know, that's it. some the news is nothing more than a rant and ray. For yeah, me. I don't yeah. Mean, I try not yeah. to even pay attention anymore to it just because <laughs> it pisses me off. Yeah. And it feels like a well, you're all fired up circus. You are. Anymore. You're you're red in the yeah, face. Just man. Pissing me but off. you know what? That's good. That's good that you find issues that are passionate. You know, sometimes you just you you. You want to protect what you love to do. You know, there's nothing wrong well, with... Exactly. That's one of the things that we talked about before, right? Mm -hmm. Before the show yep. started. What, what happens to the wildlife protection? What happens, Who manages it? Yeah, who manages mm -hmm. it? What's going to happen to the herds? What's going to happen to all the work that they've done over yeah. the last hundred years in building strong, healthy herds and managing the wildlife yeah. or po fish populations? Yeah. Well, that's, that's How are they going to do that? That's the thing, right? I mean, one of the biggest... One of the bigger indicators for well, not just fish and, and, and trout in their streams, but even with with um, you know big game animals. I mean, you cut away their habitats. I mean, you take away food, they start to encroach on people, and then people like I, last week we talked about that lady complaining about the deer in her backyard. They're they're attacking my dog. Well, you built your home on a mountain. What do you expect? Yeah, yeah. I hate to say that. I hate to be you know that you know <laughs> that person, but. And I understand you have rights. Yeah. But anyway, okay. Should we move what on to the next? About it, Kevin? Kevin, yeah, Kevin, what's your thoughts? <laughs> thoughts on it? On the uh, HR. Yeah, on, on that uh, that issue. I think you covered it pretty well. It's. I think it's. They're disguising it as something, that it really isn't. So. Yeah, yeah. it definitely needs to be brought up. So anyway, what do you got next, there, Brandon? All right. So, I don't know if if it's it's January thirty first today, right? And. Uh, Under Armour, if those of you, you know, you ch pay attention to finance, you p pay attention to stocks, um, Under Armour had their stock price just drop, right? So they were, they were trading, they're a publicly traded company, yeah. and they're trading at about $30 a share, and literally just overnight, just like immediately. Just how long ago was this? This is yesterday. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah, their, their stock price went from $30 to $20. So what That's happened? A 20 percent, there's a 20% drop, um, which is a lot. The CFO, all of a sudden, he decided he needed to step down for certain other reasons. But, I mean, you can connect the dots. He he probably was told that he needed to get out of there. Now, from um, what I understand, the, the Under Armour um, hunting, uh, I well, guess, division of, of Under Armour is separate from their sports line. Is that right? Or is it all just... Under the same umbrella. Well, it's company over. It says company sales overall were hurt by intense competition, and then the slowing growth in, in North America. And they said that their net income fell from one hundred four point nine million to uh, they ended at one hundred five. Or it was supposed to be one hundred five. So this was a this was a, a, a drop in the stock based on their quarterly report mm -hmm. and outlook competition outlook. Hmm. So North America sales hurting. Um, 
yeah, people the people that trade stocks, I mean, they're, they're very sensitive to the earnings reports. And so, yeah, they were down quite a bit from the previous year, and they just blamed that on intense competition. And they said, well, all the retailers are experiencing it. Well, yeah. A yeah. few of them aren't. Amazon's not. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have a couple of points on this. Go one, ahead. Let's hear. One is that yeah, the the competition out there is, uh, you you can't. I mean, Kevin knows this. He's he used to be a he used to be big into Under Armour and their what's it Ridge Reaper camo yep. and their their clothing line, which they put a pretty good clothing line out. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, but then uh, you start looking at stuff like First Light, Kuyu, that kind of stuff, and. It's like mind blowing how good their stuff Compared is. Compared to Under Armour, yeah, it's crazy because Under Armour used to be there, and, and I guess to their credit, Armour, Under Armour kind of was one of those uh, companies that um, was a pioneer, if you will, in yeah. in forging performance clothing. Uh, but then those some of the other companies, especially when it comes to hunting gear. Um, have taken it and just stepped their game up so much yeah. that I, I don't doesn't surprise me at all. In well, it's of, like it's like I mean this may not be the case, but it could possibly be the case. Maybe Under Armour's gotten too big for their own good. Could be. Are they they're getting too much into shoes? You know, um, if, if you've noticed the the big guy who's the guy that golfs, the one that they've or Spate, I think his name. I can't oh, remember. Spieth. His name. Spieth. Jordan yeah, Spieth, Jordan yeah. Spieth. Our golf fans are probably going to murder, massacre me if they hear that. Jordan Spieth. I mean, they're dumping stuff into golf. They're dumping in all these areas. And I'm not saying that they can't handle it. Um, but oftentimes, with, with when it comes down to business, it comes down to marketing and operations. If yeah. you stay laser focused on one thing and you do that thing better than anybody else. Jack of all trades. Yeah, if you've got of 20 of those guys that are laser focused on gear for camo, um, it's, hard for, it's hard for the Under Armors to compete. Yeah, I can see that. That could be a reason why. Uh, the other thing I think is is that they and companies do this all the time, especially nowadays, because uh, we live in a world of PC police. Mm-hmm. You know, the what a politically correctness and all that crap. Yeah, rip the bandaid off. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, there was an issue just recently this last year. Kevin knows about this, uh, I'm sure, but. Uh, you're probably familiar with the Bomars, Bomar hunting. I don't know what's the, what's the, uh, there's Sarah Bomar. What's her Josh. husband's name? Josh Bomar. Josh Bomar. So Josh Bomar is a decorated ath- or athlete uh, javelin. He was at college, right? College was he trying for the Olympics or something like that? I don't remember for sure, but I know he threw. Yeah, I knew he threw no, collegiate. He's very good at throwing javelin. Extremely good javelin thrower, um, and. He got, he was sponsored, and uh, Sarah Bomar both. So Bomar Hunting, I think, is what it is. Mm-hmm. They they were sponsored by Arm, Under Armour. Under Armour would uh, supply them with all kinds of stuff, and uh, who knows how much they're making. But uh, they were their hunting line was Sarah Bomar Bomar Hunting. That's Under all Armour. you saw for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this last year, uh, Josh Bomar the spear sh- threw uh, yes, killed a, bear, a black bear yeah. with a spear now what they don't tell you and, and you i mean you get all these freaking pansies they got to put their hero cape on this is sa- this is the same jokers that put their hero cape on and stood in their soapbox and complained about Cecil the lion now there's lions that are ravaging villages because nobody will, nobody's hunting they don't want to yeah. get they don't want to get death threats that's the ironic thing too <laughs> You killing a lion, but I'm going to kill you. They have less value for human yeah. life than they do for yeah. a freaking lion. Yeah. Anyway, different rant. Uh, so we'll save that all for these day. all these people got on and and started. Uh, they, they literally had them. Were they breaking down the doors at Under Armour? They're calling them up and saying all kinds of crap. And even hunters were doing the same thing. Uh-huh. Like you were looking at some of the. I looked at some of these. Um, uh, Hunters were, were mad that he yeah. had speared the. They thought it was unethical and calling him, uh, calling him all kinds of names and saying he's an unethical, unethical hunter and all this other stuff. But what they did wait. So, say, so here, here's the thing: if it's unethical, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt you, right? Okay. Weren't there people hunting that way? <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of years ago. Exactly. So, is the only thing that separates us from unethical is the fact that they did it for. Need and we do it it's, for sports. It's our retarded brains. At the end of the day, at the end of the box. day, you're still throwing a spear at an animal. <laughs> you're 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 hucking I, a projectile, I mean, right? Some sort of projectile take, at an take animal. Take contact context out of it. Take away skin color. Take away your culture. How how far we've evolved in terms of technology and everything else, right? At the end of the day, you're just throwing a spear at an animal. I just I just find that fascinating. 
Yeah, we did. Anyway, the back problem, to the, the yeah, but the, 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 we can talk about the, the the problem is is that we've all become so so you think, so soft. So what you're country, saying but, is you think Under Armour undercut their sales. Well, no, here's here's they got they got involved politically because all these people got super pissed off. Hunters I- included got pissed off and were calling for Under Armour to pull their sponsorship. Guess what Under Armour did? Publicly denounced Josh Bomar and called him reckless and pulled their sponsorship from him. And then here comes the pendulum swinging back the other way and hunters that know this is – there's no problem with this. Make that same argument. We've been hunting with spears. Our ancestors are hunting with spears yeah. a heck of a lot longer than yeah. we had a gun, right? Yeah. And they, they did it – they ate. They – Survived. Yeah, they brought down animals. Yeah. Animals with that's, it. That's a dumb move. That's a but dumb move. It is dumb. It, it, that was like one time I heard Michael Jordan talking about selling shoes and the marketing <laughs> aspect and and his brand. And they said, "Man, Michael Jordan, you're not so vocal about you know democratic issues and social issues and everything like that." And he says, "Yeah, because Republicans buy shoes too." So he he wasn't going to cannibalize his brand. He wasn't going to cannibalize his brand because he knew, you know what, let's just take in the butt. But here's the problem. You have these news agencies, and I hate to call BuzzFeed news, but you have they have these publishers that are literally – and you get, especially now in the toxic political uh, arena that we live in right now. I mean they're logging people that aren't voicing out and saying, you know, I stand against this issue. They are keeping a log, a database of all the companies that don't come out and politically support a specific agenda, and they're going to find a way to attack them. Oh yeah, and I think Under Armour probably fell prey to it. Um, but it felt a little bit of pressure from people to because here's the deal: you have a huge chunk of their business that is has nothing to do with hunting. Their hunting apparel and their hunting stuff was a very, very small niche, and they didn't yeah. want this very small it, niche affecting the bigger pie, right? They had yeah. this little teeny piece of a pie, and they didn't want it to bring down their larger pie. Yeah. So they uh, tucked their tail between their legs, and they called him reckless. Yeah. The, the funny thing is if you listen to – there was a, a podcast that was on the Gritty Bowman. Uh, he interviewed uh, Josh and Sarah, and they talked about the preparation that went into this hunt – it was a couple of years worth yeah. of ha- throwing a spear hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times yeah. over and over, and well, he was and deadly accurate. Now, if you think about yeah. it from, from, a, from a logistical standpoint of, of bringing an animal down, uh, you're shooting – what's your broadhead circumference? Typical. Inch and a quarter. Inch and a quarter circumference, yeah. right? So you have a you, – you're flinging an arrow. Even if you get those rage ones, the, the expandable ones, you're getting, yeah, what, like two and two a quarter? Inch. Something yeah, like that. Like that yeah. So you're getting a, a couple inch when they expand. Your cut hole is that big. You want a good blood trail. You want them to bleed out quickly so it's it's quick and fast. Humane That's the possible. S. Exactly. The, yeah. the Native comment. Americans did not care about humanity. <laughs> well, they, anyway, they I, never had PC police either. Well, I, so, know, but I, anyway, I know. I know. So, yeah. But you still want to. You want to be ethical. You want to make sure that you, you can – you're not making the animal suffer. Yeah. This spearhead was like – Five inches or something. The, they had big. a massive, massive wound caused, and he he nailed it. <laughs> when you watch the video, because he recorded it, and you watch this bear get hit, it it hit, and this bear, I guarantee you, was dead within a few seconds. Bold. Just yeah. he ran off for a sec, but it did not yeah. suffer. It was dead yeah. within a couple of seconds. So, it was a so, humane uh, kill, and he it was it was an extreme accomplishment for him, and I. I Kudos to him for doing that because the amount of of, of dedication and and uh, preparation that goes into that is insane. Yeah, is insane. And and I think honestly, karma. You, you you don't you don't run away from karma. It's always going to find a way to catch up to well, you. Well, that's not to say. And, I mean, maybe that's yeah, with then, a product and, and you, of their of their uh, of their stock price. Yeah, who well, knows? I don't know. Well, yeah, and but, the thing is, it's really hard to connect. It's really hard to say one thing uh, directly affected it. Just because you're hunting brand, you have people there, – there are people that are buying their 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 uh, camo and their apparel with that that are probably buying their other stuff. And so there is probably a direct correlation between people like, heck, no, I'm going to buy that Under Armour shirt or, or hat or, or anything. Those guys sold out the Bomar. So anyway, we can we – can, uh, yeah. Good, good, yeah, good news stuff. Be, well, yeah, you know, and, more, and just as a side note, if, if if our listeners out there, if you have something that you think is interesting and you want us to talk about, uh, honestly, send us some links. 
And you well, want hey, we'll even talk. if you want to put on your hero cape and stand on your box and pretend to be a freaking hero, then and tell us how stupid we are for it. Great. Oh, I'll I'm, I'm to a, it. I, yeah. I am not. They call to, you a freaking idiot. I am stupid, not one to shy away okay. from debate and opinion. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, the way it should be is you should disagree and then hug and shake hands afterwards. Yeah, that's the way it should. Put be. Put on your hero yeah. cape for a minute. We can cool. do it. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and uh, uh, for one of our sponsors, we'll be right back. This next segment is brought to you by Brush Tones. Keep it wild. Brush Tones specializes in wildlife art from big game animals such as elk, moose, and deer down to the river wolves like brown trout and the brook trout. Take advantage of their free shipping on all products now in their storefront. Brush Tones. Keep it wild. And we're back. Uh, again, yeah, seriously, go check them out. Brush Tones. Yeah. I want to plug them a little bit more because I like them. So, anyway. <laughs> cool. So, what have we got next, Brandon? All right. So, we got Kevin on on as our guest today. We're going to have a little talk to, talk to him about, um, I think it started out as, as tips and, and what to do in the wintertime. Exactly. 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 Because here's, here's the deal. Um, if you're an archer, and archers know this, uh, it becomes... Way more than a hobby, would you say, Kevin? Definitely. Way more than a hobby. And it, it almost is depressing when you can't get out and shoot, when it's it's like this. And you, but there there are things that you can do. I know me personally, the last four months, so we've moved. Um, my father-in-law passed away. We've had a whole bunch of stuff happen. And so I have not literally, I've literally not shot my bone about four months. And I'm going crazy. Just All And right, so right. I, I need to... Uh, remedy that problem and so kevin is here he's gonna he's uh representing himself and wilder archer but he's gonna give some tips on how to stay sharp uh during the winter time so the, the first thing i'd like to talk about is um for me winter time you can't really shoot at distance um and if you can then you're pretty lucky but i like to use winter time as the time to get over bad habits um, what I personally do is I have a target that I've set up in my basement and I, I shoot arrow after arrow at five yards every night. So what kind of bad habits are you trying to fix there? Um, you know, I use an index release, which is, you know, a trigger release. And uh, a lot of people have a, ten- a tendency to punch their trigger, um, which is honestly the biggest thing. Uh, also the, the, the technique of holding the bow, um, really comes into play on a, a good, well-placed shot. So every night, you know, I, I go down if, if even if it's only five shots and it's it's one shot pull the air out of target, literally five yards away, and I just I just concentrate and make every single good every single shot a good shot. Um, and then uh, during the winter, you have here in Utah, we actually have quite a few of them. They have three D shoots, um, pretty much all over the place. Uh, they take uh, indoor stadiums for like rodeos and stuff, and they. They build up these 3D courses, and uh, there was actually one two weeks ago I went to and um, actually competed. Didn't place or anything, but I was supposed I, to go to that. You could have just, just totally could have lied and said, "Yeah, I took this." I, <laughs> I took first place. Yeah. And, yeah, no one would have known. It was tempting, a little but, closer. Yeah, I, I, I was supposed to go to that one, but I chickened out because I I was feeling like such a chicken because I hadn't shot in four months Dude, and I didn't I know that's what I saw I saw that they were on shoot. Facebook or yeah. Instagram that they were there and I was like no I should have gone because it was it was cool because if you've never shot 3D targets I don't how are they accurate I mean what's the what's the transfer I mean are they is, is it just, just as accurate it's as just shooting? a little more realistic because you're shooting at a something that looks like an animal and it's just fun I don't know what it is about it well I honestly shoot, okay. I shoot better I'm if I'm shooting a foam target, like a, a 3D target, versus shooting paper with a bunch of rings on it. Like, I can't shoot paper at all to save my life. I'm actually pretty bad at it. But the second I get to shoot at something that imitates a deer or an elk. Like, yeah, you're picturing the, the vitals. And- right. And, you know, I'm not shooting for a ring. I'm shooting for a kill zone. And I something inside me, I'm able to shoot that a lot better. Most of the foam targets, just so you know, if you look at them, they, they're, you have a, a 12 circle that is mm-hmm. typically right dead money in the yeah. middle of the kill zone. The bread, then bread you have zone. a 10, and then you have an yeah. 8, and yeah. so you can score, but it's still all within that kill zone. Got it. And so you score points based off of that. So so the um, 3D shot, I mean, it, it bases the points on if, if you hit the target and where you hit the target. Yeah, exactly, and, and then you keep track. They give you, uh, it's pretty well put together. So here's my question. Do you get nervous? Uh, no? 
first time. First yeah, time, definitely. Yeah. But the competition probably the competition probably makes it a little bit more. Well, that kind of did add. To, I wasn't planning on competing, and then I got there, and my dad talked me into it. But oh. so anyone can enter these three D shoots. Oh yeah, you can. And like my uh, my mom and my sister shot for fun. It's like you can just go shoot for fun. Her, you don't her, have to compete. His mom just got like last year, last Christmas, right? So she's yeah. only had her bow for a year. Probably only been shooting for a few months, but. Um, a total of a few months, you know, throughout yeah, the whole yeah. year. But, um, yeah, they, they did pretty well, didn't they? Yeah. They're dang good shots. I wish I learned that quickly. You know? <laughs> um, another thing to add to what you can do in the winter to keep yourself sharp is I like, I, I like to do some strength building stuff. In strength the, training? Know, yeah, strength for training sure. for sure. Um, during the, during the winter, because I mean, like it doesn't really translate into shooting a bow, but if you, if you do, if you're able to harvest an animal during the season, it's not light. It's hard. Well, sure. It's hard to pack that animal yeah. out if that's the way you have to do it, which yeah. you know, when where we hunt, you have to pack it out. That's the oh, only yeah. way to get it off the mountain. You know? Well, yeah. I think about all the muscles that, you, that are firing when you're holding back a bow, especially when your bow's tuned to 70 pounds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my bow is tuned to 70 pounds. It's, it's pretty heavy. There's some that go 80 pounds, but that's super heavy because uh, it takes a lot of strength and effort to pull that bow back on that note one of the things i do do i, I go to the gym uh i try to go at least every morning uh during the weekday uh but there's there's those machines i'll get a five pound uh weight and i'll hold it in my left hand and i'll just take the the machine with a with a pole on it and i'll just sit and do reps replicating like myself the cable machine yeah the cable okay. machine replicating myself pulling that bow back because i'm trying to i probably look like quasimodo with a big old hump on you my do. back yeah because yeah. i'm building that one side bigger <laughs> but uh, a couple things there one i've got to hold this five pound up in my left hand like i'm holding a bow because my it, my bow's not they're not they're not zero weight. There's yeah, some weight to yeah, it, yeah. and, and if, it counterbalances when you're pulling back on it too. And when you're uh, when you're shooting at an animal, sometimes you got to hold full draw for what feels like three hours. Yeah. You know, it's not that long, but it feels like forever. I mean, last year when I was full draw on that monster six by, I saw him run away from me. I didn't get a shot at him, but I held at full draw. It seemed like it was five minutes. I was waiting for him to come by, and I'm sitting here just. Yeah. I remember. I don't remember feeling shaky, but I, if you hold it that long, it gets tiring. Yeah, so yeah. you got your your shoulder muscle holding with your if you're if you're right handed, you're holding your bow with your left hand. You got your back muscles and your shoulders tense like crazy, holding that that back because that bow wants to go. Yeah. You pull all that energy back, and it wants to. It just wants to go. And so uh, hold, keeping those muscles strong, I think that's a that's a huge tip for yeah, sure. Definitely. And it, it transfers over. It's the same thing with fly fishing. You know, I, I people like. I take out and I take them out fly fishing and um, I think it's important to stay healthy. It's important to stay fit because um, if you're weak in the legs and you're wading rivers, you're going to get swept downstream. I've seen people, <laughs> yeah. I've seen old men and getting ready to cross. I'm like, don't cross there. What happens when and waders fill with water? <laughs> the, you know, I saved a guy's life one time. Did you? Yeah, fly fishing on the Provo and he darn near killed me because I jumped in trying to save him. And, and um, But yeah, it's, it's it, I mean, health. Uh, staying physically fit, those things. It's are, just it's, a gen. It's a it's a good rule for general yeah. life. But when you're when you're focused on a sport where, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of muscles. Yeah. That's but super when you get, important. And it, when in, in any sport, if it's basketball or or hunting or fishing, archery, whatever, when your body gets kind of worn down and tired, and you lose the endurance. You start to you start to lose out on the. The, the particulars, like the fine details. You start mm -hmm. not doing these, the simple things that you should be doing. Like you were saying, bad habits can creep in. I think that's an excellent um, uh, tip to shoot close um, because you, one of the big things you want to do is focus on your release. Because if, you, if you're – we talk about target panic, right? Yeah. Where you could just even close your eyes for half a second or you could – I mean just split second, not even half a second. But Hold breath. it causes yeah. you to, yeah. to flinch or you know a little bit. When, when you start shooting out at 80 – yards or more and your arrow's gone i mean that little teeny yeah. bit of a flinch could cause yeah. uh an inch at 20 yards but you're 10 feet yeah you know, shooting yards. distance is 100 percent just fundamentals yeah so and that same as point like five yards out to 100 yards it's the same exact thing yeah and it's not just like riding distance. a mic it really yeah. isn't right you, you vouch for this when you're shooting and you're uh you you get that target panic can creep in it's not like riding a bike you, you got to keep that muscle memory and those cognitive processes constantly going uh -huh. and so if you take months off i'm i'm scared for this spring when i pull my bow out because i'm afraid i'm going to be i'm going to be rough because i have be. shot you will be that's a, I'm, i need will. to get my target out <laughs> and i'm going to do that i'm going to actually get in i'm going to shoot at at 5 yards yeah, in the garage yeah. or whatever that's it a is great tip. Yeah. 5 yards and just practice yeah. that nothing more than just 
my breathing and focusing on that that release, not punching the target, punching the trigger, and yeah. not not flinching, and, and that keeping that target panic out. Well, and if you have a local uh, archer shop that you can go down to, um, there's a few here in Utah that you can actually shoot up to 30 yards. Wild Arrow Archery is one of those. Yeah, they've got a great. Where are you range. located? Where are you located? Centerville, Centerville Utah. Yeah, right off Parish Lane. If you if you go down, uh, get off Parish Lane and head west. It is the first industrial drive right, and then your next cool. first right, and you'll see it. We'll put oh, the link right the tallest it. sign in that industrial yeah. park. Yeah, nice, cool. We'll put they've the got link. a we'll twenty link up on the twenty yard box. range and a thirty yard uh, range you can shoot at. A uh, great way to keep up. Indoor. On it. And one thing that yeah, I th- I found is is super cool, and this is for the ladies out there. But Wild Arrow has a, a ladies' night, right? And I'm I'm really yeah. trying to get my wife to go to this. She just got a bow last year. Yeah, it uh, starts up again in February. In February, yeah. well, I need to get her to go because she's she's always so embarrassed, but because uh, she can't she can't close her one eye. And I told her to go get a patch like a pirate, and she's like, "That's damn." People make fun of me, and I was like, is that no, your wife no, "No, no, no, no." Yeah. That's awesome. No, my wife impression is much better. <laughs> I can't do that because she sounds more like Cartman, to be honest with you. Oh, I got you. I just said to be put. Might have to cut that out. <laughs> no. Uh, no, she's 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 okay. But uh, the you look at uh, Mountain Ops. You're wearing a Mountain Ops hat. He, yeah. The uh, his wife Jordan, Jordan and Jordan squared. I guess she <laughs> she wears an eye patch when yeah. she goes to those uh, things. And it was kind of cool for me to see that because I could show her. Hey, look, there's somebody that that is pretty well known. In, yeah, she's out there. In she's the, putting it out there for everybody. Yeah, everybody knows it. And yeah. and it's a it's a problem she has. She can't close her one eye, and that's, that's exactly more of a very common problem, honestly. So don't be afraid to get out there and do that. But. So any, any other tips that you'd, you'd say uh, that are that are uh, crucial, I guess, in staying on top of it? And, and honestly, the the most important thing is just keep pulling back your bow. Just keep yeah. just keep shooting. Yeah, you just need have to keep shooting. It's it's a it's not one of those hobbies that you can just you know you can't pick up your your rifle after a year several years of not using it and it's still zeroed in. You just pull the trigger. It's, yeah, it's not anything like that. There's so much more that goes into shooting a bow. Yeah. So, a lot of muscles, a lot of processes, yeah. a lot of things you got to be worried about for sure. Absolutely. So, so here's the question: How what's what's the longest you should go in between shooting your bow? Oh, you man. start to, is, I mean, is that a fair question? Well, or? yeah. There's there's a, there's a lot of diminishing returns in anything, right? Yeah. So you get out there and you start shooting um, for hours, you're you're going to get worse because you're you're getting t- fatigue. No, sets I'm, in. I'm, I'm I'm talking like you put your like bow away, in November. Yes, yeah. putting yeah. I think it varies. Person, person, person. person, yeah. I, don't, I honestly don't like going more than a few days. I start to feel nice. because I want to shoot my bow. I actually, yeah. I really enjoy shooting it. You know, yeah. Um, it, there's a lot of competitiveness in in, in with yourself, especially. These, you guys have a nice setup at your house where they've got a big berm in their backyard where they can yeah. they can shoot out to what? How far can you shoot? Forty yards. 40 yards. Yeah. Um, nice. And in when it's warm, especially. But yeah, it, it's uh, it's it is all about that. It, it, you know. Don't let it in talking yourself. Literally, talk. Yeah. If you have to talk out loud, talk through that process yeah. of, of pulling the trigger and getting those cognitive processes. Keep it going. So interesting. Yeah, it's it's definitely a it's it's a fun thing to get into. We're gonna get you into it, Brandon. If oh, I'm, I'm gonna if I'm going fly fishing. I got a bow. Yeah, I'm totally down for it. I mean, I not that I haven't fly fished. I, I have so, a, I have a bow. I've tried it out before. I'm definitely not good. Didn't I you get a little to, bit of a oh man. rash? You oh, flick your hat, oh, it was like purple stuck <laughs> out. Do you know why? It's because you, yeah, you need to get set up. Yeah, need to get set. Yeah. Have, so, yeah, we can take have go see Kevin. Go see uh, them at Wild Arrow. He'll get you set up. You got got to measure you. Get you know your draw length all set up and figure out what your poundage is you can pull. Nice. You shoot. You, you, that's one of the worst things you can do is get somebody that is not the right size of a bow and have them shoot that much with their, that much kinetic energy transferred into your skin <laughs> is not a pretty picture. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> that's the quickest way to turn somebody off to bow hunting is to get them to get them to I create know. a three inch welt yeah, you know, we took, coming off of their skin. Yeah, we because, took we had that we did it with our youth group, our local youth group here. We took about uh shooting bows and they did, they lost one of my arrows. They did. We did. We looked everywhere for that thing, and that. I mean, it, we had a couple kids. Didn't we have a couple kids? Their arms get dinged yeah, up, and they're they like, did. "We're not doing this anymore. We're not doing this." this <laughs> yeah, that was a fun time. Cool. Awesome. So, uh, any 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 last tips for we uh, before we move? I think on? that's good. I mean, just I'll just inter, interject here, just interrupt here for a second. So, just to recap, shooting at five yards in your basement. Yeah, whatever you can do. Do do three D shots, competitions, whatever you can get involved in. Mm-hmm. Kind of an disclaimer. Go, let's go uh, to an uh, indoor if you, archery. If, make sure your targets can you can handle a shot. At, 
Yeah. Three, four, five yards. <laughs> I'll tell you, I have two targets. Stack I have one them. behind it, and it penetrates through the first and sticks in the Okay, yeah, especially okay. these these newer bows that got that much power. They're going to blow right we through We are not going to be held legal. We're not liable viable. for you shooting your eyeball out. There you go. So indoor ranges, anything else? Wait, Matt talked about lifting weights. Yeah, yeah, lifting weights. Saying uh, you and uh, we're going to have Paul on here uh, as well. We're going to try and have uh, continuing archery uh, tips and stuff from uh, Kevin and Paul. But you you lift a lot with Paul, yeah. right? Um, and these guys, if you want to follow them, what's your Instagram? Uh, mine is Kevin underscore Wiser, and Wiser spelled it W I S E R. So a lot of times he'll he'll post uh, some of the the workouts that you do and and you know maybe you could uh, even uh, let people know if they we'll go come to back. It. We even do a whole Say, show hey yeah this is this is uh, this is a, a great one for staying sharp with archery you know, yeah, if definitely. somebody wants to go check you out there so uh, go check him out cool now you uh, you mentioned before something was irritating you a little bit what was it An article you want to talk about yeah before I get into that I want to ask Kevin who he's got in the Super Bowl. Falcons Patriots. Do you watch football? No, I don't watch football. Wow. As you well, listen see, he to is, this, he is he's hardcore. I Hunter. get updated the, the day of the Super Bowl, which team I'm cheering for. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Okay. okay. As you're listening to this, this is the this is Tuesday of uh the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl week. week. So yeah. we got the, the Falcons and Patriots. I, had to ask. I I honestly don't care who's in the Super Bowl as long as the Patriots don't win. Wow. Yeah. See, I'm all in I don't, Patriots. I'm are all you in really? Patriots. Yes, I am. I don't have a team that I like, but I have a team that I really don't like. That's the Patriots? It's Patriots. <laughs> no. Do I don't know look, why, honestly. 26% of the people polled said they – only 26% want the Patriots to win. So. I, I don't know what it is. It's not yeah. a bandwagon thing for me. Honestly, I think it stems back to – do you remember Rich Gannon when they were, for the Raiders? Yeah. For, I don't remember the exact thing that happened, but back in the day they were going to be going to the Super Bowl – uh, it was and the, the tuck first roll, the tuck roll. Yeah, something happened yeah, and they yeah. got screwed. Yeah, and it pissed me off, and I've had a burr in my butt ever yeah. since against against the stupid Patriots. And so uh, it's just grown, it's festered, like a like a yeah, like you know, a bad boil, like a yeah, like a bad boil, or like a <laughs> like a sliver in the pot lion's yeah. paw. They just I just wanted to know. Just, I just wanted to know. Matt's going off. Yeah. This is a good segue into rants and raves. <laughs> Our rants and raves segment. You know, why not start it off by talking about the Patriots? I'll remember that when we're trying to find a good segue in the future. <laughs> don't um, talk about the Patriots. So, no, don't get me wrong. I'm going to stop you. No, go ahead. I think that Tom Brady is probably one of the best quarterbacks there is. Um, right behind uh, Peyton Manning. I don't think you'd get better Joe than Peyton Joe Montana. Manning. Uh, but he's just he just is so consistent. Oh, he's amazing. It's almost he's almost forty. It's ir- it's irritating how he's consistent 40. and he is. So yeah, it, yeah. All right. Way. So um, on our Facebook page, there was a I, I posted the link to a post, and it's a post by a gentleman named Dave Trimble. And um, oftentimes, not oftentimes, but but occasionally, we'll have the National Park Service or who, whatever regulating body that's in charge of managing resources. Um, they do things that you just it rubs you the wrong way that you don't like. And in this case, in Lee's Ferry, like I said, I put the link on our, our Facebook page. I'll put the link up on our description notes. Um, there was a fish kill, right? And it was down in Lee's Ferry. And the purpose, and it's been going on for years, right? This isn't like a one-time thing. A fish kill. A fish kill. So they go in trying there. Trying to eradicate main, the species. Right? They're trying to eradicate, not eradicate the brown trout, but I think they are trying to do it. They're just trying to dial it down because brown trout are like the... I mean, they're like the lion. They're like the grizzly bear. They will take out species. Pretty competitive. They're very, very territorial. Um, that's why they get so they get so big in some of the small streams. I mean, they eat. Um, you know, there's there's some studies that say once a brown trout gets to be around 18, 20 inches, almost 90 percent of their diet consists of other fish. Wow. wow. So, and then they just once they get there, they get perpetually bigger. Rainbows don't, I mean, they don't operate like that. I mean, they still will eat other fish, but they'll nibble on small midges. Anyway, they, uh, down the National Park Service, down in, um, down in Lee's Ferry, they did a fish kill. They killed rainbow trout. There are pictures on the Facebook page, and it sucks to see them. But anyway, um, I commented on it that we were going to talk about our show, and, and Dave got a little riled up, said that we were misinformed and that we've been, we're drinking the Kool Aid. Um, Dave, one of the one of the guys that posted some some images of this stuff. And, oh, okay. And my, my main thing is, it, it's like a it's a it's a rant because, you know, sometimes the National Park Service they do things that we don't agree with. You know, like Yellowstone Park, they let that whole park burn down in the '80s. Um, they probably could have stopped it. 
but it was just in the name of keeping ecosystems intact and keeping it natural. Um, uh, the big thing is sometimes they just don't care about recreation. And I think about that fish kill. There's probably there's probably tackle shops. There's guides that depend on depend on those trout being healthy, having healthy rivers in terms of a lot of fish, a lot of big fish to catch. People come back, um, do their guiding service. Um, so my, my, my rant in effect is I hated the, that they did it. I hated the way they went about it. And they don't communicate that to the public. They don't communicate that to local economies. But it's just – it's fascinating to see how these natural – how people will build their economy and their, their, their business plan or whatever around a natural resource or something natural. And then something happens and they get pissed off. You know, I mean, I think there has to be better communication mm-hmm. between whoever's regulating it and the people that depend on it for not just recreation, but for their for their businesses. Like so, yeah. yeah. So my rant was, and, and, and Dave, I, I kind of agree with you. Um, they don't explain it well, and they just go in and they kill it. Um, but once again, it goes back to what we talked about earlier in the news: stay engaged, stay connected. Um, for me personally, it's it's public water use in Utah. There's a lot of good private water. And that's – to me, I think that's our state right. That's our right that we should have access to that. Um, I think there's a healthy balance there somewhere. But anyway, that is my rant for the week. Did you get a lot of fire from people on that? No, uh, no. I just he, – he, his post, though, on my personal account, we, we, you know, we talked about it and mentioned there was a lot of people pissed off. I mean that post went viral. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the thing is it's been going on for years and years and – um, you gotta be careful what you post on Facebook anymore because well, it's so fiery, you, man. You People, can become a pariah in about oh, two seconds. Oh yeah, and, and it's just and it's not that I'm I'm not someone that stirs up contention, um, but I'm not afraid to play devil's advocate, and I want to get to the root. I want to I want to know all the issues. I want to know both sides of the argument. Well, think, that's the thing, dude. Being afraid to play devil's advocate is is uh, is just throwing your hat in the, or your, your towel in, saying I'm giving up on thinking logically. Right. Yeah. Because that's how you work through the process of, of figuring something out. You yeah. you say, okay, here's something I want. I, I I'm deciding on, or here's an issue. Uh, let's not. If you you throw out the talent, say let's not play devil's advocate. Let's just let butterflies and rainbows come out their butt, and everything's happy and, and dandy. Then you're just basically throwing your cognitive your your brain out the window, and you're not you're choosing yeah. to not think. Yeah. And I think that's that's a huge detriment. So yeah, yeah. people should. And I, I think also like the just. Like I said, those 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 agencies, what be it, that are managing, um, that are regulating all these resources, I think they, they need to do a better job of communicating Community. because it, it seems like in this specific instance they didn't even really give an explanation. I mean, everybody knows that they they um, some of the, the the more native of species there they want to keep them healthy, and so they just come in and they wipe it out, but. You See, know. that's the thing that I, I didn't know about this, honestly. So if if they're not informing public, then I, I would question, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? You know, if yeah. they're not, if well, they're not it's just, communicating enough. A lot of times they cite it one time. I think they're – I think I'm, they'll cite it in the 2013. They'll make a press release and they'll think that that will carry over for the it's next enough. four or five yeah. years. That's good enough. But yeah. it doesn't. I mean if you're a fly fisherman, it, it sucks. It really does. It sucks to see healthy fish that are – thrown up on the bank that are killed that are I mean yeah. some of these fish on you gotta go check out the post. There's some big monster browns. And the thing that's ironic is there's some pretty big rainbows too. That are um, being killed. Yeah, and they're and they're encroaching on the cutthroat. That's that's really at the heart of the issue. They're inc- they're infringing on the cutthroat. And I'm not gonna lie, cutthroat sp- species, it just seems like they're the they're the you know, they're the wusses of of the river. <laughs> My Natural experience selection with would take well, a while, huh? yeah, and even in here the brown uh, the Bonneville cutthroat up here in these Ogden areas. I mean, I catch a I catch a uh, a cutthroat. It's like they give up after three seconds. Yeah, and they just they're they're an easily targeted species in comparison to the other ones like rainbows, especially brown trouts. They take them out, they wipe them out. So, so maybe I guess the point of this whole thing could be tied back to what we talked yeah, about last week. You yeah. know about uh, understanding, do a little bit of research. Understand your craft, yeah. right? Or yeah, doesn't take. It's not the not that hard. Yeah, there's so much information available out there. Just do your research, figure out what it is. But yeah, yeah, cool, awesome. So we were gonna do a, a spotlight, uh, but again, uh, we are we are pushing way too long, and we don't want to make this uh, crazy long. So we're gonna push that again to to next week. So uh, just to to wrap things up, wanted to say thank you to um, our sponsor, obviously uh, Brushstones. Uh, for contributing and uh, remember that 
um, that the contest is out there. So we're gonna roll it out. It'll probably be next week too. Yeah, we'll, we'll roll it out until we have yeah. enough um, individuals to make it a, a natural contest. So um, and maybe that's just five. If it's just five, we got five to give away. The first five to do it, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, I mean they're looking they're looking great. I mean it's um, we're hoping hoping the next week or so the there's an amazing watercolor of elk. It's it's coming along nicely. So hopefully that one's finished. Yeah, I saw the, the start of that from last yeah, week. Yeah, it's that'll incredible. Be, that'll be cool to see. It's so, incredible. Yeah. Thanks to them. Also, thanks, Kevin, from uh, from himself, but also uh, from Wild Arrow Archery uh, for joining us. We're going to have him on much more and uh, get some more tips on archery and, and talk a lot about more about hunting and hopefully going to talk a little bit more. It's a little bit quiet today, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in, uh, again, if you're interested in anything that we've talked about, if you want to... Uh, give us a shout out if you want to yell at us tell us we're stupid yeah. whatever do not be afraid to reach out to us um, the website's coming soon uh, but you can shoot us an email to outyguide at gmail.com if you're specifically interested in writing for Audi Guide uh, and becoming a contributor again if you understand a particular niche super well you want to research something and provide insight to the members of our little community we're hoping to get up and going uh, also Shoot us an email at audiguide.publish at gmail.com. Yes. And if you are a brand, you own a product, um, anything like that, or you even thinking about, you know what, I want to start my own product, a hunting vest or fishing vest, whatever, shoot us an email, audiguide.marketing at gmail.com. We'll, we'll talk sponsorships, whatever. We will help you with your marketing. Um, that's one another component that we really want to push with this with this Audi Guide brand. So. Yeah, because we're a community, and uh, as a community, if you've got a product that can make uh, our community better or uh, anyone better at, their, at what they're doing, at their sport, at their their passion, then, then uh, we want to hear from you and help you out. So. Yep. So remember also, subscribe to Audi Guide Podcast. Uh, give us a review. Tell us you hate us. Tell us you like us. I don't care. We're going we're gonna to read them. Maybe we'll do some angry tweets if you're angry at us. But uh, <laughs> reviews are important uh, to us, both of us. We want to be able to read them. Uh, and provide uh, and they help honestly, us out. Yeah, provide us feedback. We honestly are, are doing this because we want to, uh, not because we have to, and really, really don't know what we're doing. So, uh, any feedback you can give us will help us out and, and help us to get better. So, anyway, as always, uh, remember be responsible. And as I said earlier, leave the outdoors better than you found it. Uh, this is Matt and Brandon and Kevin for OutyGuide.com saying, get outdoors.